तो तुम्हारा और Babies only eat about half, but still, that's two tons of food we've got to grow for them. They convert that to over a ton of fertilizer, and these girls spend 10 hours a day between them just feeding. Can you see how much food is left after a day? Nothing. So, not only do they have to replenish, the, clean, it, clean it out, replenish the food, they've also got to make sure they're in the right size receptacle for um, their stage of development. Then they've got to count everybody, and then they've got to monitor the health of every single caterpillar too. Now, in case you're wondering what she's doing here, these guys have actually started to pupate. They've finished being a caterpillar and they're about to do the transformation into a butterfly. Now, we can't leave them on that host plant for that. Uh, we actually, they send those up to us when they've done their full shedding and they're ready to go, and we hang them up on the wall over here in the emergence cage, ready for them to come out as a butterfly. Yeah, but that's further down the track, okay? Firstly, there is a reason why they eat so much, okay? It is a caterpillar's best defense, because being a caterpillar is pretty dodgy. I mean, for a start, they can't see. They don't have any weapons of any kind. Butterfly caterpillars can't hurt you at all. Some of the moths can be really vicious, but mm -hmm. butterflies can't. And they can't run away very easily either. So they're either tiny and vulnerable, or fat and juicy and vulnerable, and mostly all they have to protect themselves with are visual tricks. Now some use camouflage to blend in with their host plant, like our orchards there. But most of them like to look as scary and dangerous as possible. So they wear the poison colours, red, yellow or orange, and they throw in some stripes or spikes for good measure, in the hopes that they just look too dodgy to eat. And I think our bird wings have nailed the brief. Um, but if that doesn't deter you, uh, they're in strife. So really, the safest way to go is not be a caterpillar. Those caterpillars don't have the capacity to eat that hard material, so those guys would have been quite safe there. But our bird wings don't have that uh, luxury because they eat the entire plant right down to the ground. All of it. So the only safe place for them is somewhere else. Anywhere else. 
So they find a good spot, generally on the tops of the boxes, on the mesh of the metal. Once they're secured, they then have to peel off their last caterpillar skin to reveal the chrysalis, or the pupa case that's underneath. Now when they peel off that skin, they also discard the now redundant bits. So their legs and feet drop off as well, and their heads fall off too. It's no longer required. Mm -hmm. And then it gets weird. Okay, in the interest of accuracy, it's weirder. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, wait for it. This is the strangest thing I think I'm ever going to hear in my life. It's my favourite bit, and it just doesn't get old for me. Okay? You can disagree afterwards. So, here we go. Inside that chrysalis, whatever's left is pretty much useless in the same shape for a butterfly. I mean, consider a caterpillar's got terrible eyesight, doesn't have anything else to avoid birds. The diet's going to change from solid to liquid, they need different mouth parts, different digestive systems. They're going to have to fly, breathe, everything else. So whatever's left of the caterpillar's body is completely deconstructed right down to its raw materials. Over the course of a day or two, they basically just melt like an ice cream in the sun and there's just liquid in there. Yeah, then they recycle that and construct a totally different body. Weird, right? Amazing. Yeah. Never heard it like that before. It's my favourite bit, and it only takes them 10 to 30 days to completely recycle themselves. That's got to be impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Now, sorry to burst any bubbles here, but they're not actually unique. This is clearly the best way of doing things, because 75% of all insects go through exactly the same amazing transformation. Including a common house fly, right, which starts off as a maggot, and then, I know it's not as romantic, I'll give you that. But it is quicker. For these guys, like I said, 10 to 30 days, small is quicker, bigger takes longer. When they're nearly ready though, that chrysalis goes dark and soft. Gives you a bit of a heads up that they're about to emerge. At which point we transfer them over there into our emergence cage, a bit of protective custody really. Now at this point in their development, the wings are tightly curled up inside that chrysalis and about the consistency of a wet tissue. Which is flexible but very fragile. Now as they climb out, they use the last of the liquid in their bodies to pump through the base of their wings to stretch them out. And you can see on the monitor here, those wings very much like Dane's wings, little hollow tubes, and that liquid is curled like a glue. And they pump it in there, it dries hard like a glue, and then those wings set and they're good to go. But it can take anything from two to six hours for those wings to dry. On a day like today, it takes even longer. And until they have, the poor baby is completely helpless. They just have to hope you don't notice it. So this is why we protect them in there. All being well though, they take their first flight themselves. And it is only once they've proven to themselves that they can fly that we then come along with a butterfly net and take them into the main engine. And we do this twice a day and we average 50 or so from here every day. Just kind of made it. Yeah. Alrighty, now I know I can talk off all these for chair guys, but any questions? When they emerge, they're fully grown adults. They're also a finished product. At this point, they no longer have any cell building capacity at all. And if you're going to use something that can't be repaired, of course, the more you use it, the quicker it wears out. And butterflies aren't the most robust creatures in the world, either. Right, you ever touch one of that dusty, powdery stuff on your Yeah, don't. Because that's what their lives depend on. That dusty, powdery stuff is actually scales. Rows and rows of tiny little scales like fish. My eyes are not great, so I guess that's something to be focused. <laughs> Sorry if it's not. Um, right, so you know it's every time they've got some of the scales fall off. This is why some of the butterflies look tattered. When those scales fall off, it exposes the delta tissue underneath. Now, the more they flap, the faster that happens. This is why our poor Ulysses doesn't get very long. It's gorgeous, which is kind of its problem. It's not wearing any blue, uh, any uh, poison colours, no red, yellow or orange. So instead of looking dangerous to anything, it looks pretty much delicious to everything. And to make up for it, it's become one of the world's fastest butterflies. <laughs> and constantly flapping, it basically deteriorates in 10 to 15 days. That's it. Yeah, but there is another one up there, the Australian Lurcher. And that one's the easiest to photograph. A little chocolate brown one, big orange stripe on its wings. I'm sure you've seen them sitting around somebody. Because that's what they do best. Courtesy of that orange stripe. They look at that, believe the advertising will leave them alone. But the bird wings, solo artists, really. Uh, Trimba dollars, actually. <laughs> slightest thing upsets them. Uh, so we pandered to their needs. Yep, we found the best way to go is to give them their own individual executive apartments inside the main aviary itself, their own individual door to the world too. 
so we don't disturb them at all until they are perfectly ready. Um, that's what it takes. Uh, but we found that we cater and we give them the best possible conditions at every stage of their lives, we get the best possible result. So on a bad day, our survival rate is around about 80%. On a good day, it can be up to 95 So we're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> Is he jumping? I don't know whether he jumped or he fell. This isn't. How do you. Your camera's locked? The camera's locked? How? Where? Thanks. Oops. I took you without your face. You want to come around and we'll get a photo? Oh, 
Be quick on the trigger to catch them. in the middle of Karanda and it's three o'clock in the afternoon and uh, four o'clock in the afternoon yeah, was, and we just cuddled a koala and saw a python and uh, crocodile yeah freshwater crocodiles and lots of interesting stuff but everything's closed we can't even get a cup of coffee four o'clock in the afternoon the shops have all closed some of them were closing before and the ones that weren't closing as we were walking past actually closed before it was an interesting market that we walked through to get to the cuddle the koala and the butterfly sanctuary which is all great highly recommended but it's the middle of winter here 25 degrees and rainy season but quite nice quite pleasant you can see we're all a bit, a bit wet but comfortable fine and we're just walking to the car and seeing we can drive somewhere to get a cup of coffee so this is where we are Kuranda come up here to far north Queensland Great. <laughs>